Hello, my name's Calum, and thank you for joining us today for our tech talk. In our previous video, we went over how to install and configure an OpenFire chat server. Today, we're going to be going over the Spark Chat client. The Spark Chat client is an open source XMPP client. It's very lightweight and very reliable, and I actually like it quite a bit. It does rely on Java, just like the server. So if you're in a corporate environment that does not allow Java, you may need to find another XMPP chat client solution. But if you are allowed to use Java, this is a good client to use. It is also made by Ignite Realtime, the same guys who gave us the OpenFire server. With that, we'll get started. So here I have a Windows 10 client that is entirely unconfigured. Uh, I just deployed the VM from template. And now I'm going to be going in and installing the client here. The first thing we're going to need to do is configure the IP settings. Now in our last video, we gave the server the IP of 2.2. And this client, we're going to give it 2.3. You do need to have a subnet mask here. Uh, and because our client is on the same subnet as the server, we actually don't need a default gateway. Uh, but if your server is on a different subnet, you will need to put this in there so that it can find a path out to your server. You can also optionally put in DNS if you're using um, host names to resolve the server. Uh, I did not set up DNS for name resolution, uh, so I'm gonna leave that blank. Okay, it looks like our network did identify the gateway. And the first thing we're gonna do, as always, is we're gonna jump in and test connectivity to the server. I'm going to ping the chat server. And we are able to ping, so we have connectivity. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to jump into my share that I created for this demonstration and pull down the Java prereq as well as the Spark installer. And I'm just going to pull these over to my desktop. We're going to start with installing Java, which just like on the OpenFire server, should be a really quick process. Okay, now that our window is up, we're going to walk through the install process. And Java is installed. Now we're going to install the Spark client. The Spark client has a very basic and, and typical install. All right, we're going to run through the installation, and it should take just a moment. Again, this is a very lightweight client. Now that we're installed, we're going to go ahead and launch the client. So again, uh, we left our OpenFire server configured with Active Directory integration. So when we go to log in, we're going to use our Active Directory credential. Here it says to enter the domain. It's not actually asking for the domain, it's asking for the host name of the chat server. So if I had gone into DNS and set up a host record for the server, I could enter that here. I usually like to use something like chat.domain. So in my case, it would be chat.dsnet.local. But because I didn't do that, I'm just going to put in the IP address of the chat server. Then I'm going to put in the password for my Active Directory account. Because we just installed it, uh, it is going to ask us to allow Spark through the firewall. We did have to manually create a rule for the OpenFire server, um, but the client does prompt you for that. And then here it asks, about certificates. So it says that the server you're connecting to identifies as itself with a self-signed certificate. In our case, that's okay. Um, if you are using self-signed certificates or you are using certificates that cannot be verified by a third-party verifier, like VeriSign, um, this warning is going to pop up. So we're going to go ahead and accept that certificate. It says, do you want to trust this certificate? Yes, we do. 
Okay, so we get an error here that says certificate hostname verification failed. This is very typical. I've seen this numerous times in DoD deployments, and usually that's kind of a showstopper unless you know what to do. So we're going to go here into advanced, and we're going to go to the security tab. And see here, this checkbox uh, is unchecked. It says disable certificate hostname verifications. What that means is that by checking this box, it's not going to try to reach out to VeriSign or anybody else to verify the certificate. So if you're using DoD certificates or you're using self-signed certificates, you're going to need to check this box. One more note here. If your encryption mode happens to be disabled for whatever reason, notice that this box is grayed out, um, which means you won't be able to check the box. Uh, by default, it is set to if possible, and then you have the option to check the box. All right, we're going to click OK and try to connect again. And there we have it. You can see up in the top left, it has my display name from Active Directory, so it has my full name in there. Right here in this box, it should list uh, any contacts that you have from this tab at the bottom. So as you use Spark, you can actually add um, other users to your contact list so that you can create direct message chats with them and things like that. I generally don't save a bunch of people in my contacts list, uh, but that's entirely up to you. This next tab over that says conferences, uh, if we click on that, you'll see conference.openfire01 is listed. Uh, every time you install an OpenFire server, it comes with a conference server. And all that does is uh, create a directory where all of your chat rooms can be uh, kind of listed in. It's kind of your phone book for the local server. So if we double click on that, it will list all the chat rooms that were created on the server side. If you remember from the last video, we did create a channel called test. And by double clicking on it, it's going to dump me into that chat room. So you can see I'm the only person here currently. Uh, if there were other people in the room, they would be listed and you can start chatting away. Uh, it is important to note you can open as many chat windows as you want. So if I had another chat group, I could join that one at the same time. They each open into their same window and, uh, and there will be a little pop-up uh, or rather the icon will flash at the bottom if somebody messages into one of those windows. And that about wraps it up. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to drop it in the box below. And if you have any interest in requesting content or you have a piece of software you would like me to demonstrate or a problem scenario, drop that in the comment box as well. Also, if you found this video helpful at all, please like and subscribe the video. It really helps out the channel. And I hope you have a blessed day.